Good afternoon everyone. In today's video, I'd like to repeat a similar exercise to the one we followed last week where we took a look at price action bar by bar. I think this is a very useful exercise in at least training our eyes and getting a good feel for recognizing patterns, recognizing price action, and recognizing what each candle bar might be telling us from a purely logical standpoint. The overall idea here is we can group up each of these bars into one of five buckets. The first bucket is either we have strong bulls suggesting bulls are very much in control. We have weak bulls suggesting that while bulls are in control, they aren't as strong as I think we would expect them to be. On the converse side, we have strong bears and we have weak bears as well. And then if we have neither of these being met, then in the middle we have indecision or something like an NA where we don't have an opinion or a bias one way or the other. We're just waiting to try and see which direction price is likely to break outside of. Now, if you haven't already seen last week's video, I would recommend giving that a watch before this one just to get a feel for the overall ideas that we talk about, what are scalp trades, what are longer term trades that we might be looking at, um, how to catch trends, when to recognize trading ranges, limit orders versus stop orders, things of that nature. Today's video is going to be a bit different, but also a bit similar. Things that are different, the time frame, first of all. Last week, we focused in on a five minute chart. This week, I'm bumping that up to a 15 minute time frame chart to try and make the video a little bit shorter. Last week's video was about 40 minutes. I'm hoping today's video is a bit shorter while still going through the same ideas. And one user mentioned, can we try doing this on Tesla? So I thought, hey, let's try switching this up from the S&P 500 to a more specific stock here with Tesla and test if the overall ideas still end up being true. That is, is price action the same regardless of which market you're looking at? Or does it vary really based off of each market and time frame? And certain candlesticks might be fake outs or things of that nature. Now, starting off here first, uh, we're going to start with that 15 minute bar at 6.30. If we take a look at Monday's activity, so that's yesterday's activity, we can see Tesla on Monday was more or less in a tight trading range for the most part. We did not trend in one direction. This is really the upper end of the trading range. This is the lower end of the trading range. And we bounced from that lower end one, two, three times uh, and really ended up just forming inside of that zone instead of breaking out and trending like we see in, say, Friday's activity right here. So that's the first idea which we'll need to evaluate is today, are we continuing inside of that same trading range action or are we breaking outside of that trading range action and we're going to see a breakout in one direction. We can draw some horizontal price lines from yesterday's activity which encompasses that overall range, the highs and the lows. Now if you are following along, I recommend loading in a chart of Tesla on a 15 minute time frame chart or even watch this video but make sure you hit pause after each bar so that you yourself can try and quiz which of those five buckets do you think this bar falls within and what do you think is likely to happen on the next bar. That's how I think you'll get the most value from this video. Now starting off here, the first bar was a bearish bar in that we closed below our opening price. But on both sides here, we have some fairly prominent wicks. So that would suggest to us we don't have strong bulls or strong bears lying around anywhere. This would be a weak bear candle, in my opinion, given that uh, price did close below where it opened. We buyers tried to bring price action up higher. We had sellers really meeting uh, up at towards the top of this bar, excuse me, near that 935 mark. We also had bulls on the bottom side near that 925 mark trying to buy a price action. So that first candle, weak bearish. We also have a gap up here, which given that we have a weak bearish candle, it's likely that we would fill that gap. The probabilities are at least stacked higher in that direction compared to seeing something like a reversal candle right here with some strong bullish activity. That's at least how I would read today's price action. Now next 15 minute bar, we fill that gap but really barely to a T here. The high of this particular candle was 922 and the low of this candle was 921.75. So we got there, we went down by about 25 extra cents. So not a whole lot, at least when you're looking at a thousand dollar stock like Tesla. So we filled that gap. Uh, we have another weak bear bar, but this time we're starting to see buyers are coming in towards the bottom. And this particular candles case, we had more buyers where you can see sellers tried to bring price action up down fairly uh, low here, but buyers were able to pick that back up and we closed fairly close to where we actually opened. We don't have a lot of wick on the upside here, so we don't see strong bulls lying around at least anywhere so far. 
So another continuation of weak bears. We also have the idea that we've now filled the gap. So if we see a bullish candle, that might suggest that, hey, we can now look for a move away from this particular gap fill, along with this being something like a reversal point. Next candle here. Next candle is a fairly strong bullish candle. This is a much different candle compared to the first five and 10 minute bars. We can see that because we close towards the high of this particular candle. And compared to where we had bears having some sort of control here, the bears had no control. We didn't have any sort of wick towards the bottom, very small if anything. And that is our first sign that, hey, this is a strong bull candle, suggesting that there are now bulls coming right back in and buying price action up higher. For the scalpers, you had a very small scalp opportunity right here, buying the close, looking for a retest of at least a high in the next 15 minutes, but really more so looking for then a test of this 942.85 zone, which is the top of this range. For that scalp only, I don't think the risk to reward makes any sort of sense at all, considering that your max reward, if I go into our trend line tool, was something like a buck, but you had to risk, what is that, uh, close to 12 bucks to try and get that same scalp idea. But the probabilities were, of course, they're in your favor. This looks better like a buy the close sort of candle, looking for a stronger continuation move up, stop below this particular reversal candle, looking to try and see how high is high with at least the scalp, along with 942.85. But a bias here to break above that trading range given the strength of this particular candle, which I think is different from the 5 and 10 minutes that we've had since the open, or excuse me, 15 and 30 minutes since the open. Now, next candle. We don't see the same level of continuation that I think we would have been looking for uh, with strong bulls coming in and bringing price action up higher, breaking above this range. But we also don't see strong bears coming in either. This really would be an indecision candle. We did close below the open technically, but that body is very small. We have wicks on both sides. We don't really have clear direction. So still a bullish bias based off of what we saw in that previous 15 minute bar. And we're looking for the bulls that are hanging around to try and bring price action up higher and going for the same previous targets we've discussed. Now, next candle, we tried to break above here. We got close to 942.85, but not quite enough. We went all the way to 942.23 in this candle. Still wicks on both sides. So we see now we're back inside of this trading range behavior, but now we have a smaller trading range, at least for the past 15 and 30 minutes. Uh, still looking for that breakout from this particular candle. That stop has not even been close to being triggered. Uh, we also don't see the same level of upside activity that I think would instill confidence that, hey, the bulls have full control here. This 15-minute bar was really uh, the first precursor to an overall longer-term breakout. Now, next bar. Now we're starting to see bears take over just a little bit more, but keep in mind what the bulls did in 15 minutes in this one candle here, the bears have been unable to reverse in 15, 30, and 45 minutes. So not really strong bulls or bears here, excuse me, on any scale. We don't see bulls coming in just yet. We do see some weak bulls given the wicks that we're seeing towards the bottom of each of these candles. But that's about it as of right now. We're still inside of this fairly tight trading range after having a pretty nice bullish uh, candle, which so far this is our strong candle of the day, suggesting we would expect a breakout to the upside. Now next bar. Now we finally get that breakout after really being inside of this range. We have our next bull continuation bar, this time going above that 942.85 mark. So we broke above this previous trading range. We're now looking for a continuation of price action. This would be a good opportunity to add to this winning position already. So looking to try and scale in a little bit more. One more time, you have this natural reversal candle to now bump your stop up from here all the way up to this particular area with a stop below 934.15. So really that 934 mark below there would be where your stop is. Again, another nice scalp opportunity candle, high probabilities, but low risk to reward opportunity. Still looking for a greater move, suggesting that we've now seen strong bulls, strong bulls, and the entire time, the bears at least have not come around 15, 30, 45 minutes, no real strong bearish activity, 15, 30 minutes, no real bearish activity either. So definitely bulls a little bit more in control, but we do see more bars, at least as of right now on the 15 minute chart, closing uh, below their open compared to closing above their open. But the bars that have closed above their open, the two green bars are fairly nice green bars, strong bull bars. Now next 15 minute candle, 
We see a little bit of continuation. If you did take that scalp, that scalp paid for itself. One more time, we're right back inside of that trading range. So if we see something similar here, maybe 15, 30, 45 minutes of sideways action before breaking up higher, that would at least be somewhat of a predictable pattern. Maybe even retest the breakout point, that 942.85 mark, as long as we don't break below this previous low from uh, this candle right here, suggesting a trend shift of any sort. Next candle. One more time, we're inside of that trading range. This time, weak bears, still unable to reverse what uh, bulls were able to do in the past 15-minute candle over the course of these 30-minute, uh, two 15-minute candles. Next bar, now we're starting to see bears come in just a little bit more. We're closing towards the bottom, so I would argue this is now the beginning of a strong bear sort of candle, or at least the first strong bear candle that we've seen all day here. But we still haven't broken below not only this low, but also this previous candle's body. We're still very much inside of that. It's been 15, 30, 45 minutes, and we haven't been able to break below that what the bulls were able to do in just one candle. So if you imagine now being again inside of that trading pit, I still think we have strong bulls lying around. If the next candle we see is another strong bear continuation candle, which takes us at least below not only this low, but also where we would have our stop, that 934 mark, then I think you could argue that the character is changing. This was a double top where we broke slightly above, and you'd be looking for a retest at least closer towards 50% of this range, if not the bottom half of this range, which takes you to 907.09. But for that shift, we still need to see price at least give us clues that that shift is happening. As of right now, this is just a bear f or a bull flag forming in an overall bullish trend, right? If we take this uh, high, we connect the dots here, and if we even extend it before seeing the next bar, if we fall inside of that bar, then that would suggest we're still inside of that bull flag formation. Now, next candle we see, we can remove that trend line already. We had bullish follow through, this time again closing towards our highs of that particular candle. So unable to see the same bearish follow through that I think the bears were hoping for. So one good way to think about this is if you went short here and you saw this next candle as your next 15 minute candle, would you be A, happy, B, sad, or C, thinking that, hey, the bulls might actually be resuming this overall longer term trend, taking price action up above this previous mark closer to that 950 area. And I think the answer to that, at least in my case, would be the latter option. Now, next candle, we still see uh, bears trying to defend this area. Still inside of this larger body's uh, chopping range, if you will. So 15, 30, 45 one hour, one hour, 15 minutes, what the bulls were able to do in 15 minutes doesn't really, again, instill confidence that the bears have full control here. This strong bear candle didn't really have the same follow through that I think you may have been looking for. Now, next candle, bulls come right back in. So looking like bulls have a little bit more control here. Weak bulls, given that we have wicks on both sides, and we're not able to see that thrust up higher, just in you know one jolt or one direction, anything of that sort. But we're also not seeing a complete breakdown of price action. So we're right back inside of a new trading range right here, near that previous breakout point of 942.85. Now next 15 minute candle, still inside of that trading range, a little bit more bullish, but still weak bulls. We don't see strong bulls like that eight o'clock and that seven o'clock candle. So, so far it's happened on the hour. This is also that lunchtime hour now. We're in that 9 to 10 a.m. Uh, Pacific time zone, which is noon to 1 Eastern time, suggesting that when we do see uh, people coming back to their monitors, we would expect to see this trend resume in whichever direction or a breakout outside of this particular trading range. Now, next candle. Now we're starting to see bulls take a little bit more control here or take over control. Closing towards the highs, we see 15, 30, 45 minutes of strong bullish activity. We we're able to break above this previous uh, resistance point as well. We've now tagged 950, which might just have natural resistance there based off of the nice round number zone. But so far, still very much bullish, and our buy opportunities have been this candle breaking outside of that range with strong bulls. This candle breaking outside of our previous pivot point. Uh, stop has been able to currently be moved up to this point, which you may now even move up to our previous or our new uh, uh, pivot point, excuse me, given that we've now seen price close above this high. This has now formed that new pivot point, and we're seeing buyers take over full control here, uh, really seeing more of a double top, where at least it looks like we're going to break outside of that double top with buyers in control. Now, next 15-minute candle, more uh, continuation, more follow-through. 
we can see here sellers tried and they completely failed, right? Bears tried to bring price action lower. Bulls were able to not only defend this, but then bring price uh, price action up higher, even some, suggesting still a very strong bullish trend here. And at this point, I think we can get rid of any doubts that the bears have some sort of control here. Each time the bears try, the bulls are defending that fairly well. So bias here very much towards the bullish side. Next candle, an another scalping candle here, close. We have the high. Uh, again, your risk reward about $1.32, but your risk involved is a little bit greater. But we're looking more so for a continuation of this bullish trend, which has now persisted for the past one, two, three, four, and five 15 minute bars. At some point, I imagine we'll get a pullback though, but let's not try and guess where that's going to happen. Okay, so more bullish continuation here, this time closing very much towards our highs. So uh, all signs point to us having bullish uh, power as of right now. If you're looking to try and find where you expect price action may start to halt, we can load in um, our volatility box zones here. And loading that in, we're still nowhere near the upper edge of that volatility box, suggesting that we still have room to the upside to continue to keep going. Let's load in our next candle. But as of right now, we see a lot of bullish pressure here, a lot of strong bullish candles as well, closing towards their highs. We're making higher highs each time we have a new candle. And we've broken out well past this 942.85 zone. So next bar, more bullish follow through. Each time again, sellers tried, got completely obliterated. Uh, bulls were able to defend that level pretty well and bring price action up higher. So still all signs point to being bullish here. Next candle, more bullish follow through. This looks more like a squeeze that may have fired long. If I load that in just for a second to test out if there was a squeeze here. Okay, so we can see we had the squeeze forming up until that 7.30 mark. We may have had a squeeze on a lower time frame chart or a greater time frame chart. Nothing on that 15 minute time frame, which is supporting this overall longer term move. But still, we've had bullish candles and all of this started with the buy here, the buy here. And then we had bulls really taking over control as we saw closes happening near the highs for one, two, uh, three, four, five, and six continuation bars. So at no point here is there anything screaming short at this point. I don't see anything about strong bears really beyond this one candle, which they were unable to defend at all. Now next candle, we're starting to approach the upper end of our short volatility box zones. Uh, we're also starting to see candle structure change just a little bit. Instead of closing towards our highs, we're now closing inside of this body. We had sellers defend this area somewhat well, we also had buyers defend the bottom area somewhat well, maybe going into a somewhat of a trading range here, given we now are going into a limit order sort of market. That's That would be confirmed if the next candle we see is inside of this overall trading range from this particular candle, where the high is 984, the low is 972.71. Next candle, okay, so that was not confirmed. We saw bulls resume the trend one more time. And at this point, again, a strong bull candle. This time we're hitting the top of our volatility box clouds. This is usually where we'd expect price to start to exhaust. So I would be looking at signs here for this price action to start to halt. And at this point, a buy here is not something that I think makes a lot of sense. Even though we see a lot of strong buying pressure, at this point I would be expecting buyers to at least start to take profits off. And this candle to be more of that last and final thrust, if you will, that you often see in trends before you start to see bears come into play. We can also see this is the largest uh, bull candle, I think, in this overall trend. This candle was about $13.41. And the only other candle that I think would even get close to that in this region, 925, 875, uh, this was 11.01, and then that first candle was 12.90. That first candle was the closest. So the fact that you're seeing the largest candle so late in this overall long-term trend, I think points more to the idea that it could be profit-taking, along with the fact that we're now towards the upper edge of our volatility box zones. This is also where Tesla appeared on our live scanner. So everything here is pointing to exhaustion as opposed to bullish continuation. And I imagine that there's quote unquote suckers who are buying Tesla up here thinking that, hey, I missed this, 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 let me finally get in. And of course, at this point, I would imagine that's where the bears finally are able to have some level of control where we don't see the same level of bullish follow through. That's at least what I would be thinking at this point. Next candle, we'll, we still continue to see bullish follow through here, but the candles are starting to become smaller. 
We're also pausing near what would be our short zone for the volatility box. Keep coming forward here. See if okay. So now we have bears finally come in. That short hits that target. We hit the target line at 985.04. We're starting to see bears come in, defend this area just a little bit. We're also now getting towards the end of the day. We have about 45 minutes left in terms of follow through. So at this point, I think it would make a lot more sense to shop around sideways here towards the upper edge of the clouds or even start to see a bit of a reversal, maybe a pullback towards that market pulse line compared to seeing more bullish follow through where we go and tag 1000, even though that seems like a level that's just waiting there uh, for all buyers to try and tag. Next bar. Okay, so we still see bullish follow through here. So that previous analysis off of this bear candle wasn't necessarily accurate. We still haven't really broken outside of this range here. The We did make a new high, 997.86, but we haven't been able to decisively break above there. That 1000 mark, I think, is still just screaming that it wants to be tagged. Uh, the bear is unable to really have any kind of follow through here. The bulls still have full control here. But we're also not seeing us make higher highs and higher lows like we've been doing for much of this trend right here next bar okay and this is now that last 15 minute bar we stayed inside of our volatility box clouds we did have that one little uh, short opportunity for anyone who did take it and that was about that one smart short if you will where we expected price to exhaust based off of this being a profit taking candle hitting upper edges of the volatility box where we expect exhaustion to take place anyways we have edges and probabilities stacked in our favor to have some sort of a short idea here but that was again a very quick short which you'll see buyers one more time resumed trend and you can see just how strong and prevalent this bullish trend was in this entire rally move up higher so that is i think the end of price action that should be the last candle here and that is how i would read the 15 minute candle analysis inside of tesla we started the day with the gap up we then broke above our previous trading range uh, from the previous day here and after we bo uh, broke past that trading range i think that's where we had a little bit of uh, time for buyers to gather uh, shape and form before then we saw this crazy bull rally taking place taking us from 940 all the way up to what 997 so about a 60 dollar move inside of tesla taking place which you had uh, these candles telling you along the way if we had buying pressure or selling pressure and who was in control at any given time. One other thing I thought might be interesting is if we do come into a five minute chart here and if we zoom out, one thing, uh, so this is I think where we had that squeeze play actually setting up, which we looked for on that 15 minute chart. I believe that squeeze may have been there now on a five minute chart, which actually ended up firing. And of course, you can find squeezes on any time frame chart. I think it's still easiest and best to read price action no areas where you expect price to start to exhaust and as long as we're not inside of there use price action as your telltale sign these indicators make it easier and you can see here with the slingshot squeeze which ultimately momentum gathered up the squeeze ended up firing long and we went for well past i think any level of normal squeeze histogram bars that you would expect uh, when you're trying to just be logical, that's usually what, seven, 10 bars maybe. This squeeze ended up going up in terms of momentum for 24, 25 bars. So definitely abnormal here inside of Tesla, but I found it eerie where price action decided to stop, which is the upper edge of our volatility box clouds. You can also see that with the profit taking candle, all the analysis that we already talked about here. Um, but hopefully today's video helps to give you an idea of how to read the same price action candles, hopefully doing this bar by bar was helpful for those of you that hit pause along the way, testing yourself to see if you identified the strong bulls or weak bulls or strong bears or weak bears uh, correctly, or even the indecision candles. And for those that are interested, you can repeat the same exercise using something like a five minute chart, maybe even go to a completely random stock that you have no idea what happened today. Start from the very beginning and just go through bar by bar and try and train your eyes to recognize each candlestick and uh, understand do you see weak bears do you see strong bears what is the overall story that you think is happening if you were to be in the trading pit all right hope this video was helpful take care everyone good luck trading and we'll see you in the next update